Hello teachers, we're so glad you're joining us today. As you can see, the countdown's on the screen. So feel free to um, put the Q and use the Q&A box to share your name and where you're from. And we'll get started in one minute and 33 seconds. Hello everyone, um, good afternoon. My name is Sue Nod. I'm an education specialist with the Minnesota Agriculture in the Classroom Program. And we are so excited that you're, you're joining us today to learn a little bit about YAC. So I wanna give a couple shout outs. It looks like we have um, Ms. Wolf's J, um, students from JFK Elementary in Lakeville, Lakeville, Minnesota. Ms. Polson's class from Plainview, third and fourth graders from Our Saviors in Crookston. We're glad you're with us. Um, Lakeford's Academy in Grand Forks, North Dakota. We are glad you're with us. Some eighth graders, Mrs. Vogel's first graders. Um, we're excited to see you. We have Miss um, Mrs. Paradise um, from where'd she go? Um, Dwyer, uh, Mrs. Dwyer's second grade class from Pleasant Valley, New York. We're so glad you're here with us. Um, Sabika Public Schools, Mr. Thelen's first graders from Cleveland. We are happy to have all of you with us today. So like I mentioned, my name is Sue Nott. I work for the Minnesota Ag in the Classroom Program. And um, we are lucky to have a really awesome host. Her name is Melody Smith, and she is the co-owner and farmer of Clear Spring Farm. So before we go her, before we go to her farm and meet Melody, I want to remind everyone that we um, are excited to answer your questions live during this virtual field trip. So please feel free to use the Q&A feature if you're joining us um, on Zoom um, to put your questions and I'll ask as many as possible. And also if you're joining us on YouTube, you can use the comment feature to put your questions in there and we'll do our best to get those asked, asked and answered. So we are excited, like I said, to introduce you to Melody Smith who is the co-owner and farmer um, at Clear Spring Farm, and she, she raises yak. So if you've never, never seen a yak or don't know much about them, today is your day. So Melody, please tell us, uh, get us started. Tell us a little bit about you and your farm. Well, thank you, Sue. Uh, that was a wonderful introduction. And um, yeah, so my name is Melody Smith. We're at Clear Spring Farm here by uh, kind of between Red Wing and Cannon Falls, Minnesota. Um, I have been raising yak for 10 years now. I was introduced to yak when I was two years old. Dr. Seuss, he introduced me to yak when I was learning the alphabet. The letter Y is for yak. So I have had yak on my brain for a long time. In front of us here today, we have the calves. These were bottle babies. They are now um, about nine months old. They'll be close to a year here now in, in June and July. These are very friendly because they were bottle raised. I do a lot of bottle raising. So I have a very friendly adult herd that I can work with and feel safe mingling with. And uh, yeah, like I said, we, we have the babies here in front of us and I have the two color patterns, the black and white ones here that look more like a Holstein, they're considered a Royal, the Royal Tibetan 
pattern. And then in the back there, the more solid black with a little bit of white on their forehead, that's the native trim, native and imperial trim. I have two different types of trim. So I got into yak farming, like I said, 10 years ago, and I, I wanted to raise something that was unique and multi-purpose, uh, potentially profitable, but most importantly, it, it had to be edible. And um, Yaks just checked all those boxes and they had proven to me over and over that they are just a really delightful animal. Um, they have the, the face of a cow and the personality of a dog. They have the shoulder uh, shoulders humped like a bison. Their feet are as nimble as goats and they've got a horsey tail You'll be able to definitely see it better on the adults, but they have a horse tail and they're as quiet as fish. Do you guys know what the yak says? Well, actually, let me tell you, they don't say much at all. They, they do a low grunt and you might hear the babies grunt a little bit in communicating with each other, but honestly, we don't hear a lot out of our yaks. So now, they are just, yes. We do have a question already. Um, Students are wondering, do your yaks ever fight? Do they ever fight? They absolutely can, um, especially the boys. They have a tendency to be a little bit more aggressive to each other. Um, they, the, the adult males, I only have one uh, breeding bull, but if I were to have more than that, they would definitely be fighting for competition. But realistically, they get along really well and uh, they will playfully, uh, spar with one another, if you will. But in all, all, you know, they're really just pretty gentle, pretty gentle, calm, docile animals. So we'll step over here to our adult yaks and you can kind of get a better picture of uh, what they look like. I'm gonna actually step in here. As you're walking, Melody, we have a picture. I think it's you wearing like a purple coat with um, one of your yaks. If you're familiar with this this picture, do you want to tell us about the the, the yak that you're pictured with? Yeah, that is uh, one of our steers. His name is Emil, and we were featured uh, in the Minnesota Cooks calendar, and that was a, a photo shoot that they did for us. So, um, yeah, Emil, he's. He's here somewhere, not in this group right now, but yes, he is still with us. So I'm gonna see if I can get Patches to come over here and say hi. Well, hey, you Patches. Can, Patches, we have another question. This is from Miss Tupto's class. They wanna know how big is a yak calf when it's born? That's an excellent question. So yak calves are really tiny when they're born. They're about 25 pounds. So they're very small, um, which makes it, very easy for the moms to give birth. We have very, uh, it's called calving ease and it's a beautiful thing. So they're tiny, but uh, an adult yak, you know, the adult males get to be about a thousand to 1200 pounds. This is Patches here. He's about 1200 pounds, um, but the females are quite a bit smaller. An adult female like Tootsie over here, she's about 800 pounds. Um, so they are, rather, you know, comparatively small to like a traditional Angus or Holstein cow. So I just um, lost my train of thought for a second there. Oh, here's Tootsie. Tootsie is my oldest cow. She's actually 18 years old. And uh, yaks can live to be over 20 some years old, kind of like, like horses. And uh, let's see, I, I don't, she no longer has babies. I have retired her from that responsibility. So yaks, uh, I, as I was saying before, are multi-purpose. There's several purposes of a yak. And um, first of, and for, first is for meat. The yak meat is very low fat, low fat, high protein, um, it's a nice dark red meat. It does not have a gamey flavor. So it's uh, uh, a wonderful red option, red, dark red meat option. Second purpose of a yak is milk. Um, I don't milk my yaks, but as uh, 
one little quick little tidbit here is yaks are not native to the United States. They're native to Mongolia, Asia, Tibet. And the, the people over there rely on these yak for a lot of their uh, uh, living purposes for eating and everything. And yak milk is very um, high fat and nutritious. And uh, like I said, I don't milk them, but they uh, do produce some really high quality milk. The other uh, purpose of a yak is they can be a beast of burden or a, a pack animal. You can put saddles on them, for example. You could, people can ride them around or over in Tibet, they will put pack saddles on for the nomadic people to carry their tents and their, their housing belongings around. They also use yaks to carry lots of gear up on Everest. And so they, they are a great beast of burden. Um, and then as we are talking today, the other reason, the other purpose is fiber. Um, yaks have this beautiful uh, undercoat here that is super, super dense, warm. And when it's collected and I have it processed, it makes a beautiful, uh, yarn that you can make into socks or scarves, mittens, all that kind of good stuff. So again, the main purposes of yak are, are meat, milk, they're a pack animal or a beast of burden, and the fiber. So again, very multi-purpose. Oh, I know what I was going to say the other, the other minute there. They're very slow growing. So it takes a yak about at least four years to get to a full size and in all honesty it's more like eight years the reason they're so slow growing is they only eat one percent of their body weight a day so patches here who's you know anywhere from i think he's about 1200 pounds 11 1100 so he's going to eat about between 10 and 12 pounds of feed a day, which is basically very little, compared, relatively speaking, to like a Holstein or an Angus. So Melody, maybe um, there, are, there are a few questions about what yak eat. So you just told us how much they eat. What, what are the foods that you feed to the, your yak? My yak are 100% grass fed. Um, in the summertime, they're on pasture. I have in the back here, I have 15 acres for my 40 yak to roam around on and they eat grass all summer long. I also have an additional 15 acres that we raise hay. And so in the summertime, I'll bail up that hay and we feed it as dry hay in the winter. And they also will eat fermented hay, like if it's wrapped, um, which is a nice option too, if we can't get a dry hay crop. But in all honesty, they just are grass fed you know, where they're from, the native to Tibet, um, there's not a lot of, it's, they just basically eat grass. There's no grain available. If they were to eat grain, which they, they will, if you give it to them, it's just a little bit too rich for their system. And uh, it really doesn't do them any good. So I do give my little uh, bottle babies some creep feed or like a calf ration while they are on the bottle, just to boost that nutrition. Sure. So. All right. Well, we have a few more questions, Melody. I, I'll ask you a couple. Um, Mr. Funk wants to know how many total yaks do you have on your farm? So I have around, uh, I have around 40. I actually have eight cows that are going to have babies in the next, well, they'll have their babies in May, between May and June. Um, I like to keep my herd size under 50. Uh, I just want to be able to raise enough feed and have enough pasture for, uh, for those for that uh, herd size. Uh, you can typically in this area, you can have about three yak to one acre. That's the stocking rate. So that is a really, it's a nice option for people that have small acreages to, to have the yak because you can have them on, on you know, smaller acreages, which is a really nice option. So we've had a few students in classes um, make observations about their horns or antlers. So first of all, can you tell us if they're horns or antlers? And then Mr. Thelen's class wants to know how large or how long do the horns usually get? And is it, is it different for every yak? Excellent questions. So the yaks raise, they have horns. These are horns. The males and the females both have horns. They continue to grow. They, they do not lose them like uh, deer do or, or elk. So their horns are on from beginning to end of their life. Um, 
the average length is for females is really around 30 inches and males maybe a little bit longer. As they get older, you'll see from patches here, they kind of have a tendency to curl back. It's called a handlebar horn. And that is a, a very, um, it's a, that's a yak trait. They like to um, curl back like this. That is um, indicative of the yak. Um, and so you got to answer all those questions. Yeah, I think I think you got them. There is another. I'll ask okay. you one more, and then we, then we can move on. But Miss Triton wants to know um, how many different breeds of yak are there. So there in in the United States, there are about five five or six color patterns um, recognized. And like I said earlier, I raised the royal, which is the black and white ones like this, or the native trim, which. I had the native trim here was mainly black with a little bit white on their forehead. Um, but there are golden yaks recognized, a solid black, they're called an imperial, and there's a couple other. So there's, it's more of a color pattern, but in all honesty, uh, they're all the same species, uh, a pure blooded, pure -blooded uh, yak. You can crossbreed a yak with a regular cow, um, like an Angus or Dexter for that. Um, purpose and uh, the the offspring, the males are uh, sterile, but the females can have go on and have um, babies, kind of like a, a horse and a, um, I believe it's donkeys. Awesome. Okay, Mr. Northy, one more question. Mr. Northy wants to know where can you purchase yak meat if we wanted to. <laughs> yeah. So I I um. I sell yak meat from my farm. I also sell to several co-ops around this area. Um, but, uh, you know, come to the farm or I will meet you in the cities. And uh, I sell to a couple of restaurants as well. Everest on Grand in St. Paul and the Blue Dog Cafe in Welch Village. Um, yeah, just uh, contact my farm and I can get you set up. Awesome. Okay. Um, so that meat is one of the purposes you mentioned before. And then fiber is another purpose. And this, this little field who I think this little field is from Maine, if I remember correctly, when she said where she was from, um, she wants to know how much fiber can one yak produce? So we talked about meat now fiber, how much fiber does one yak produce? So yaks produce uh, about one pound a, a year. Um, and that's if, if I go through and I collect, you know, every week I have to comb them out. I don't shear them. I comb them out with a, like a dog brush and we'll go over more of that when I get into the barn. But uh, we, we comb it out about one pound per animal per year. So it's, it's relatively little compared to like um, sheep wool, for example. But it is a, it's considered an exotic fiber. Uh, it has no lanolin very soft, uh, a lot like cashmere. And it also has a natural moisture wicking property to it. So it makes great mittens and socks. So um, yeah, I believe there's a video that shows um, how to go about collecting the fiber. And we're going to head back to the barn and look at some fiber products. Fantastic. So there's a couple questions um, from Mr. Husak's class. They want to know how, how, how fast, does, do you call it hair or fiber? How long does, or how fast does that grow? So it, I, I call it fiber. Um, it definitely is not considered wool. I guess you could call it hair as well. Um, it'd be more comparable to hair than it is wool. Uh, every year, they're gonna grow out that undercoat to protect them in the, in the winters. So every year I'm gonna comb out that undercoat. Now their long guard hairs, um, like around their belly and uh, like their tail, that's considered a guard ha hair as well. That stays on forever. I don't, I don't process any of that. Okay, um, so Alex, I forgot to introduce Alex and Carrie. So Alex is our tech person. So Alex, if you have that a video of, um, of the fiber um, brushing that Melody mentioned. And then we also have Carrie, my colleague with Minnesota Ag in the classroom, who's on site and she is probably very chilly, but we're glad she's there with her, her phone um, being the videographer today. So now we're seeing Melody, we're seeing um, 
combing out the fiber. Do you want to tell us about that? Yeah, so in that video, I have one of my yaks in the head gate squeeze chute, and I'm using a, a dog brush to comb out that beautiful undercoat. And um, the video can just really speak for itself there. You had mentioned that, that you get about one pound, is that correct? One pound of fiber each year from each yak. Correct. Okay. Correct. So we have a few more questions. Jade from Miss Molly's fourth grade class is wondering what is the biggest yak you've had on your farm? Uh, the biggest yak I've ever had on my farm, um, well, it Patches, who you met out there, is, is really pretty big. He's about 1,200 pounds. But I, I did have a yak that actually made the Guinness World Record. And for the longest horns on a yak. And he is in the 2021 book. His name was Jericho. And here he is. Oh, wow. So he was, yeah, he was 20, 20 years old when he passed away. He passed away unexpectedly. Um, it was very, very sad, of course. It's how he sat when he was a good pet like that. Um, but nonetheless, he is famous. So I would have to say that that is um, my most famous yak I have uh, at my farm. He's, no, like I said, no longer with us, but um, we definitely remember Jericho for sure. Excellent. Well, thanks for sharing that book and pictures. That's, that's fantastic. I see a lot of um, tools and materials in front of you in this barn. Why don't you tell us about some of those? Yes. All right. So with fiber being our focus, we're going to talk about the yak fiber. You saw the video of us actively collecting the yak, the yak fiber. These are just traditional dog brushes here that we use. We want to get in there and get that nice, soft, um, down, it, down or, or hair, that fiber is really soft. And you're going to get a lot of guard hair too that will come out when you comb it. So this guard hair has to be separated out. And to have this raw fiber processed, I, I send it to a fiber mill. And the first thing they're going to do is they are going to, they're going to wash it to get all the like the vegetable matter and the dirt and stuff out of it. But then they're also going to send it through a dehair to get these long, coarse guard hairs out of there. When they have separate ultra soft fibers, they put it into a roving. So it goes into a long roving. From the roving, people can do hand spinning, or I have them make the roving into yarn. This is an example of sock yarn. It's a little bit thinner. And then this is a little bit heavier weight of yarn. And uh, this makes wonderful scarves or, or mittens. This is really soft. You're gonna, you can wear this up against your skin. Now, remember I told you about that dehairing waste, that dehairing, that when they have to dehair this guard hair out, I have them save that. And we actually have that made into rug yarn. And I have an example of the rugs in front of me here as well. And the rugs are obviously quite a bit coarser than the products that you would wear next to your skin. The, the natural color of my yak uh, yarn is kind of a gray. It does take a dye really well. If people wanna dye the, the yarn, they can. You can kind of see an example of that in my rug, I had them put in some pretty vibrant colors in there. So uh, again, uh, it's, a, it's a, lot of, a lot of work. It takes about six weeks to you know, comb out that fiber each week from each animal. Um, it, it's really a labor of love. <laughs> so uh, I enjoy it, that's why I do it. Yeah, we have a couple questions, Melody, about the fiber. So Ruby in Mrs. Bishop's class wants to know how long can their hair or fiber grow? And then Ms. Tufto's class wants to know, are the rugs expensive to buy and where do you sell them? So the fiber is, uh, the fiber that we're trying to collect 
is, is actually kind of a shorter staple. So it's pretty short um, and it grows to be about, uh, at the most we'll get about maybe three inches. Okay, so that's relatively short compared to other wool, you know, wool producing animals. Um, and because of that, I do a lot of times have my yak yarn um, blent with another fiber to hold it together. Uh, especially for the socks, I will have them put in some nylon. And yaks, you can buy yaks um, pretty much anywhere in the United States, mainly out west there's a lot, but there's a few of us here in Minnesota that will sell as well. I do sell breeding stock and um, I do sell bottle babies, cows, I will do starter herds. Um, relatively speaking, they're about the same cost as a good quality Holstein. Um, my uh, females, depending upon if they're how old they are, anywhere from uh, $2,000 to $3,000, depending on if they're registered, what their fiber type is like, all that good stuff. The males are a little bit cheaper because I, well, they're all steers, so they're about $1,500 to $2,000. A good breeding bull, he could be anywhere from $3,000 to up to $15,000, depending upon, um, you know, his genetics. So you mentioned, uh, Melody, a couple times Holsteins. Um, for some of our viewers who maybe aren't sure what a Holstein is, could you tell us about a Holstein or Angus? You've used those terms a couple times. Sure. So Holsteins are a um, type of uh, dairy cow. They are, they're, they're black and white and they produce a lot of milk. I grew up on a dairy farm myself up by um, Kensington, Minnesota, and we, we milked Holsteins. They're known for great um, milk producers. Um, and uh, the Angus, they're more known for their uh, meat. So. Sure, different breeds. I hope I, um, yep. So Bowen has a question. He wants to know, did you make the rugs yourself? So I, I do not make the rugs myself. I actually have, I send off the raw fiber. So I basically collect the fiber, and I'll, I'll send in about I, about 30 pounds per year because I don't get, um, I don't put all of my animals through that handling facility. So about 30 pounds I send every year, they process it. And the, the rug yarn, I actually have them machine weave it uh, at, their, at their shop. But um, if somebody was ambitious enough, they absolutely can, they can weave yak rugs. Great. All right. Thanks. We have a few more questions. Um, Mr. Youngbauer wants to know, how many calves can a yak have at one time? Oh, that's a really great question. So uh, typically yaks only have one at a time. Um, I actually have never had twins here. There are some herds out west that have had twins. It's pretty rare, um, but typically it's they're just a single birth. And actually over in Tibet and Asia there, where the nutrition is relatively poor, um, they may not have a, a calf every year. It might be like one every three years because the nutrition there cannot support a pregnancy. But in America here, um, our nutrition is pretty good. Um, and I usually am able to get about one, one calf per year if I allow it uh, per cow per year. Excellent. And I realized that we maybe didn't describe this at the beginning, um, but Caleb is wondering, where is your farm located and do you give tours to people who stop by? I do give tours. I love giving tours. I love sharing my farm with people that are interested in yak. My farm is located in southeast Minnesota uh, between Red Wing and Cannon Falls. My address is Welch, Minnesota. Um, and if you go to my website, Clear Spring Farm Yaks, you will um, get all the information you need to book a tour. I just am appointment, I'm open by appointment only, but I love to have people come visit. And summertime is a great time to come visit when the calves are, are babies and it's, uh, it's much more warm outside than it is today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you guys could go in this, get a little shelter um, in this barn that you're in right now. So you mentioned a few times that, um, that yaks are from Tibet. And Mr. Y Northey wants to know, how do yak adapt to be in places where they aren't originally from? Oh, that's a really great question. So yaks have been in the United States since about the 1980s. And they came down to the United States from a herd in Canada. And for them to adapt to the climate here, it they've done pretty well, to be honest with you. Um, 
they like it where it's very cold and high elevation. So places like Montana and Colorado are ideal. They have done very well here in Minnesota. They love the winter here. It's their favorite time of the year. As you can see, they were not bothered at all by the weather today. They, they love it cold. So that being said, summertime here can be a little bit harder for them. When we have a 95 degree day with minimal wind and high humidity, it can be taxing on them. So what I will do is I will put out sprinklers um, and they, if they choose to, they can just take their turn walking through the sprinklers. I do have a shade structure as well. And sometimes I will put out fans if needed, but those days honestly are very few and far between, but there are a few days in July and August where I definitely put out sprinklers. And, uh, so far I've not had any, any loss to heat exha exhaustion. So Excellent. Okay, so Marley from Miss Leefield's class is wondering if you have any other animals on your farm besides yaks. I do. I've got two two angora goats, and they uh, produce mohair, which is a nice, also another nice natural fiber that I can blend with my yak fiber. So I've got two angora goats. I've got four dogs. I have six cats. These are all outside, of course. Well, a couple of dogs are inside dogs. I have a little poodle inside. Um, and I've got about 20 lane chickens and a couple roosters. And I think that's it for right now. <laughs> that's like quite a bit to keep track of. That's awesome. Um, so we're nearing the end here of our time together, but we have a couple more questions. Um, Kaya is wondering if you have a favorite yak. Oh, uh you know, I, I love all of my yaks and I really do like Tootsie right now. She is my oldest cow. I've had her since she was with my original herd that I bought in 2012. So she is near and dear to my heart. Um, however, there was one yak, her name was Autumn. And I, I absolutely fell in love with her when I went to visit a yak farm. And that's why I got into yaks is because I fell in love with this beautiful yak. Her name was Autumn. And um, I just wanted to, to buy Autumn. And, um, you know, the guy's like, um, you can't buy just one yak. So I had to buy a package deal, which was seven yaks. Um, Tootsie was one of those. And of course, Autumn, I got Autumn, but um, Autumn has since passed. She passed away a couple of years ago. Um, but I do have some of her offspring. In fact, that one yak that you'll see with me in the purple jacket, I believe it was the one that, um, that is Autumn's son. His name is Emil, and he's very special to me as well. So, and I, of course, I love, you know, Jericho, Patches. Um, they all, they, I love them all. They're all so unique. They're just like uh, students in a classroom. They each have their own personality, and um, it's wonderful. Well, that's awesome. I would highly recommend Yaks. Okay, great. We've had a few comments too that they love the names that you have for your yak. So that's really cool. So speaking of favorites, Melody, this is our last, our final question for you. What is your favorite part about being a farmer? My favorite part about being a farmer. I love being a farmer. I love being outside. I love being close to animals. That is my, my joy. That's where I find my joy. And honestly, to be a farmer in today's um, economy, you really have to love it. Because um, sometimes it can be very frustrating. And the the margins of profit are very little. So, um, but honestly, the best part of being a farmer is to be able to each day, mingle with these animals and be with them from birth to death. And um, I, I just find that really, really comforting. It's a joy for me. Well, that is awesome, Melody. And thank you so much for, for hosting us virtually on your farm and showing us everything there is to know. Probably not. We could have spent hours with you, but um, sharing a little bit of Clear um, Spring Farm with us and, and helping us all learn a little bit about yak. So thanks, Melody. And thank you, yes. to students, for joining us today, too. We hope it was interesting and fun and you learned a few new things. Um, teachers, if you want additional agriculture themed resources for your students, we do have our Ag Mag magazines, which if you are um, have signed up for the year, you should have received them in the mail um, last week or, or coming soon. If you haven't signed up, you can go to mnagmag.org and um, subscribe or sign up there and we'll send them to you for free, no cost. And also teachers, 
um, we are hosting um, summer teacher tours. So if you want to learn a little bit more about agriculture, we have professional development, four different opportunities to load on a really nice coach bus and travel around in air conditioning and get to meet farmers like Melody. So thanks again, Melody. Thanks again, teachers and students. Have a fantastic St. Patrick's Day, everyone. Yeah, bye-bye.